Hey, Rich Mirror. It's good to see you all again. Uh, I want to share another story with you today, but first, uh, let's play the favorite game. Hope that you're keeping up with this, and today we're kind of into December, hopefully, and I want you to tell your favorite Christmas carol. Now, this would be a song that we would sing kind of at church, uh, one that talks about the birth of Jesus or something about, about that. We'll have probably your favorite Christmas song another week. But my favorite Christmas carol is I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, written by Henry Longfellow. And uh, it's a very good uh, Christmas song, and I really, really like it. Okay, now you can pause this for just a second, and you take time and share your favorite Christmas carols. Okay, we're back. Let's move on into uh, a couple of jokes before we get to our Bible story. We're going to finish up. In the book of Daniel, well, no, excuse me, we got two more coming from the book of Daniel. We've got one today that's kind of an unusual story, and the next week I think will be a more familiar Daniel story. Okay, here's our first joke. You see the two, these are kind of winter jokes. You see the two snowballs. One of them's kind of a big guy with a headband. He says, I don't know what to do. The more I run, the more weight I seem to put on. See, he's rolling in the snow. Never mind. Okay. And, and then it is, says, cold weather is here. I had to scrape the ice off my windshield this morning. I used my supermarket loyalty card. I only got 10% off. Okay, that one's pretty cute too. And then the last one is I got a snowman. He's in the grocery store. And it says, right in the middle of the produce aisle, Frosty got caught, gets caught picking his nose. Of course, he's picking a carrot to be his nose. And that's kind of how he got caught. Okay, here we go. Today our story is going to be about Nebuchadnezzar losing his mind. Now, this is a pretty important story because this person, he was the leader of the whole Babylonian Empire and he lost his mind. Let's look at the story. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was king of the Babylonians and ruled over the most powerful empire in the world. God had allowed him to win battle after battle and come to power to teach the disobedient people of Israel a lesson. They were now working as slaves in his kingdom. But success had gone to Nebuchadnezzar's head, and he was boastful and proud. He would not give any glory to God. Then one night, Nebuchadnezzar had a strange dream. In his dream, he saw a very big tree. It was so big that the, it went up into the sky, and it leaves spread all over the world. The, the tree grew fruit and dropped down to feed many animals. In its uh, branches were many birds. And uh, while the king was looking at that, uh, an angel came down and ordered, cut down the tree, shake off the leaves, and scatter the fruit. Drive the animals and birds away. Leave just the tree stump and fix a band of iron and brass around it. When the king woke up, he ordered all the wise men in his kingdom to come to him. Oh, excuse me, we've got one more before he does that. Sorry, he hears the angel saying about him, let grass grow on him and rain fall on him and let him live like an animal. He will live like an animal for seven years. The angel then said why this was going to happen to the king. God is all powerful, not you. You will learn that God rules over people and he is in control. Okay, so then we go to this next one where the king woke up and he ordered all the wise men in the kingdom to come to him. Tell me what my dream means, he demanded. But none of his wise men, magicians or advisors, could explain what the dream, the king's dream meant. Well, then Daniel, who we've seen before and who loved and trusted and obeyed God, came to see the king. The king says, I know no secret troubles you and explain my dream to me. Daniel asked God for help and then he waited and an hour later, God told him what the king's dream was all about. Daniel went back to the king. Tell me what the dreams mean, even if it's bad news, the king said. And Daniel said, well, it's bad news, and your enemies will be pleased. The tree you saw was you. It was cut down because you will be cut down, and you will be cut down to size for seven years. But why is this going to happen, the alarmed king said. It's because you are wicked and don't show mercy to the poor, Daniel replied. You are puffed up with pride and think you are more powerful than God. Of course, Daniel continued, if you repent and do what is right, God will not punish you. 
Well, Daniel left the king, and for a whole year, nothing happened. The king stayed rich and healthy. His kingdom prospered, and everything went well until one day he was out on his palace looking at all the things he was ruling over, and he was filled with pride. This is my great empire, he said. I built it with my power. I am mighty. Look how important I have become. As soon as he said that, these words uh, came from above and the king heard them. O king Nebuchadnezzar, the kingdom is departed from you. God told him that he was in control, not the king. Right away, Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind. He left his palace and ran off into the countryside. He just went wild. The king was blown about by the wind and soaked by the rain. His fingernails grew long like bird's claws. He lived like a wild animal for seven years. And then he got his mind back. King Nebuchadnezzar had learned that God does whatever he likes in heaven and earth. No one, not even the king, can challenge him or question what he does. The Most High God lives forever and ever. His kingdom never ends. He commands his armies and the people of earth and the people of earth. Well, he was sane again, and he returned to the palace. Blessed be the God, Most High God, he said. King Nebuchadnezzar was now a, a, a humbler man and a much better ruler for it. He realized that he was king of Babylon, but not by his power, because of God and what God had allowed him to do. So he wrote, Now I, King Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol the King of heaven. All his words are true and his ways judgment. And he humbles those who walk in pride. So King Nebuchadnezzar learned his lesson. What a great story. Now next week, we're going to see a different king that Daniel has to deal with. Okay, we got a few prayer requests. And this is something that you don't even know about. Uh, I may have mentioned how my granddaughter, Abby, had been a little sick. Well, we wound up having to take her to the hospital uh, like uh, a week ago Friday. So she had a ruptured appendix of all things. She's not even two years old, but they got her to the hospital. They did surgery. They removed the appendix and it, it was ruptured. So there was uh, some contamination in, in, in her body and she was in, in the hospital all last week trying to recover and they had expected right away that there would be some abscess. And uh, sure enough, there was, and they had to wait till Friday to find that. And they removed two abscesses and gave her some medication for the other. And she has just gotten home today. I'm filming this on Tuesday. So she was in the hospital for a long time, and she has just gotten home. So you need to continue to pray for her. We still have people in our church who have COVID-19, but we're not doing as badly as uh, Central Baptist Church, one of our sister churches. Some of you may know about it. Uh, their pastor has COVID-19, but not nearly as bad as his wife does. His wife is on a ventilator, and his daughter, one of his daughters, is on a ventilator also with COVID-19. So they need our prayers in, in, a, in a mighty way. So I want you to remember to pray for those folks over at Central and also for my granddaughter as she recovers, okay? And I want to pray for you as well. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, the opportunity to share this story about how you are in control, no matter what the rulers of this world think, that you're the one that's in charge. We thank you for that. And I do want to pray for the folks there at Ridgemere, that you continue to be with them and strengthen them. And I pray for our friends over at Central Baptist Church that have been stricken with the COVID-19 virus, especially those who are very serious in the hospital on ventilators. I just pray that you intervene and just do a miracle there so that they can be healed. And Father, we just pray that your will be done in everything with this, Father. We're tired of the pandemic, but we know that it's still here. Father, we just pray that you give us the vaccine that we need so we can move beyond this. We thank you that you're a God who loves us. And just ask now that you continue to be with my granddaughter, Abby, as she recovers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.